whole country was abducted. And the wolves didn't, didn't notice. They bring an ancient culture intact. And, and delivered it completely whole to the West. They walked out of Tibet. They, were, they didn't take buses or planes. They walked out. Tibet House began with a, just a handful of people. Uh, Bob Thurman was one, Richard Gere was one, I was one. Melissa Matheson was also another one. You know, if we allow them to be destroyed, what does it say about us? These Tibet houses are so key because they are the cultural embassies of the Tibetan people. We didn't have a place. We did the Year of Tibet. 7,000 Tibetan events in 35 countries. The tragedy of Tibet became a, a huge cultural windfall for the West. And not just for the West, but it also would be Australia, it would have been South America. You know, one of the most important activities that happen at the Tibet House is hosting a series of lectures and workshops. It's not what you're experiencing that matters, it's how you relate to it. And I think that's what Tibet House is teaching over and over again. And I have not found any other place in New York City that has been able to do that. You can, you know, pursue your path uh, as an individual, of course, but it, it really is wonderful to feel part of a group, and that's what Tibet House provides. And people don't associate like an oasis of quiet with being in New York, and so there's a little ironic twist there, which I think is quite wonderful, to have Tibet House right here. And I'm learning with, with everybody here on this side of the world, from the heritage of Tibet. It's not the heritage only for Tibetan people, it's for the world, it's for the planet, it's for humankind. <laughs> Real American strength is not weapon, but democracy, rule of law, justice. So the real method, personal contact, person to person, face to face, talk, and listen. His view, what is his complaint? Seems that some of the Buddhist concepts provides the scientists uh, have some kind of new way to look. Meditation can be the rocket, ethics is the aiming device, and wisdom is the explosive charge. But now we have the real, the real teachers that arrived.
This was the first one of teachers. And it was an astonishing uh, gift, I can say. I mean, it's just so evolved. Where they have gone with their minds is a lesson to all of us and is something I think within our futures, the planet is going to have to pay some attention to this style of evolution of the mind. The power of prayer is very limited. Change of the society, change of the world come only through action. We have guided missiles. Whether we come from Islam or Judaism or Christian. I'm honored to be on stage with a world-class leader because we do have a world-class problem. Tibetan culture is a very rich in a number of disciplines. They're the most advanced, in my opinion, uh, meditators and have enormous things to teach the world about the mind. Tibet House, I think it's one of the initial center that promoted Tibetan culture. Even before I was part of the Tibet House benefits, when I was very little, I hear about Tibet House. We Tibetans are very appreciative of the works that is being promoted by Tibet House. What is unique about the Tibet House, it's, it's not a a Buddhist institution. It is a center that is dedicated to providing a space where the general public will have opportunity to really engage with the best of Tibetan culture. It's such a valuable contribution not only to the culture of Tibet, but to American society, to have places like this. You want to feel that they're going to be enduring, you know, or, or last a long time. When we go to Tibet House, for instance, and we look at the art, it's not just decorative, it's message in the art. And the Tibetan culture that is linked to the Buddhism it's really needed today to help us to find inner peace, happiness, true happiness. In this library, people borrow books to study the art. The home of Tibet House is here. Uh, it's a, an ex exhibition place, it's a library. There's a, an amazing collection of art here. You can come here and you can view the artifacts, you can go in the library and learn. You can learn about the history, but also through the events that are here. See, the inner Manjushri is everybody's inner non-dual wisdom intuition. The gallery exhibitions. All kinds of uh, teachers are coming from time to time. We have lectures and we have conferences. Your people can come to Tibet House and they can meet Tibet. There are also other initiatives that have to do with teaching Tibetan medicine. Tibetan medicine is, is um, extremely subtle. I love Menla. Menla is the, you, I always describe it as the country retreat center of Tibet House. It does have a strong dedication to Tibetan medicine. and it has many different kinds of programs of yoga and meditation. It was very funny. Well, he stayed three days. And they, two... I think the land itself is 
spectacular and a really special place. A lot of artists had been very interested and engaged in Tibetan culture. Tibet House, which came along in the late 80s, really focused that energy of American artists. After that, in spring, April 27th, at Brooklyn Academy of Music, we will have Phil Glass, Balding Gray, and several others will have another evening to benefit Tibet House. Really, about 30 years ago, someone got the idea that maybe I should give a benefit concert. And, and that was the first one. Laurie Anderson was there, and I was there. They've been very popular concerts. We've had people like David Bowie twice, Paul Simon a couple of times, Patti Smith many, many times. There's been a flag for Tibet, too, that, that we have this concert every year. We raised money for the concert, and, and it was that money that actually we were able to buy this place. Thank you all very much for coming tonight. Tashi Norbu wanted to say a few things. You could see these images, very traditional Tibetan way of drawing. But it's also setting itself up as a kind of educational place where people can learn how to access those qualities in their own mind, as the Buddha taught, you know, 2,500 years ago. Being able to feel compassion for the whole world is a challenge. There's something about the environment that has people feel very welcome. So, you know, if you're brand new, you don't feel like stupid, and <laughs> you don't understand what's going on, or that you can't ask questions, and uh, it, it's a really great learning environment. I want everyone to know that it's still alive and it's still important and thriving and it's not a culture that's faded away with history, it's here. The Tibet houses present the, the character of the Tibetan people their, with their Buddhist culture. That's unique and it is specially called for on the planet today. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to Bad House. I can't believe that it's been 30 years. You know, others really nurtured to Bad House and created it and supported it and for us. And so now it's like time for, you know, more people to step up and and pay it forward so that Tibet House can, can continue to support and sustain others. When we support Tibet House, we're really in the great American tradition. The U initiated, we all have the responsibility to help you. By helping an organization like that, you are not helping only yourself, but you are helping potentially the community, some new generations to come. It's a, it's, I think Americans are very moved by that because that's the story of our country anyway. <laughs>